Yeah, no, thank you very much and um, and uh, good evening to all the participants. Uh, I'm not sure in terms of the time differences uh, from your countries, whether it's evening or, but yeah, that is my greetings to all of you. And um, we are approaching the, um, in the context of the Zondo Commission's uh, recommendations. From our perspective, these recommendations have come to the timely uh, manner in that um, we are currently looking at all the recommendations from the Zondo Commission. And uh, as you are aware, <clears throat> it's voluminous recommendations which are also becoming clear to us that um, it will be practically difficult to, to do them without some of the mechanisms that are available to other jurisdictions in the world, which includes um, some of the recommendations that um, the OECD is making in terms of, um, um, of the uh, settlement kind of uh, agreements that we, we currently have in South Africa, which we, we some of them have been done um, outside the Criminal Procedure Act, but um, in a civil kind of uh, proceedings which um, has uh, led to some of the monies being um, recovered uh, in terms of uh, billions of rents from some of the big multilaterals. But um, the issue of, um, of, the, of, the, of the deferrals and the issue of the, of the settlement is something that we're also looking into whether this is something that could be helpful um, deal with some of these matters, particularly that we also have a very um, tight time frame uh, to report to Parliament as to how we're going to deal with the recommendations of the of the of the of the Zondo Commission. And um, we are looking at these recommendations favorable because we do think that we do need some of the mechanisms that could help us with these uh, multilateral companies to cooperate. Um, with our law enforcement agencies in our country to be able to help uncover some of the issues that um, might be hidden or only known by these uh, multilateral companies that span um, various uh, jurisdictions. So um, it is something which is still at a very embryo stage, but um, looked at very deeply within ourselves. And um, hopefully soon we will be coming up with the um, clear recommendations that will be taken to Parliament uh, in line with the Zondo Commission's uh, uh, report, which will obviously also be responding to the OECD's recommendations because um, we, we look at it um, as a parallel or intertwined process from our side. After a number of uh, whistleblowers have uh, been affected, as you are aware, the current regime of witness protection um, only covers um, someone uh, or even a whistleblower when he or she becomes a witness. And that is a very late stage of the investigation and um, a decision to prosecute might have been taken. So the regime needs to cover the processes from when someone becomes a whistleblower at the level of, a, of the floor at work and so forth. And so that is what we are currently looking into, the Canadian uh, system and also the, the current uh, US uh, system to see how can we learn lessons from that and um, be able to implement the system in our in our in our country, you will also be aware that this is one of the major issues that has been raised from the the Zondo Commission's report. And um, the bigger challenge that we are currently facing is the reality that while we are looking at legislation and all that, the whistleblowers, as uh, as John uh, has said, um, um, uh, uh, their struggle is ongoing. What do we do now with the current uh, situation, which we we are we find ourselves in a difficult position because legislation 
that we have is, uh, is the witness protection and does not extend to the whistleblower. What do we do as we speak now? So that, those are the challenges that we are currently uh, grappling with. Um, and um, we, we have been um, given a clear line of march from the president himself to work on this with the with agents, given the current uh, difficult situation that the whistleblowers are. Uh,